and always a reminder to myself an abdukul ajeezu da'ifu miskeen wa zalim wa jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence and alhamdulillah that only Allah come into our life to teach us this way of <coughs> immense love and muhabbah that Allah's immense love for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah describing, I'm a treasure wanting to be known, stressing wanting to be known and truly Allah will never be known. This is the mystery of Allah the greatness and majestic ocean of Allah and only the signs of Allah will be known to the servant. And Ayatul Akbar, the greatest sign of Allah is the light of all creation. And Nurul Anwar wa Sirat al Asra, the light of every secret and the secret of every light. Alhamdulillah Allah grant us to be on the turuqs that come to teach us that that light is called Muhammadun Rasulullah Our life's goal is to reach to that reality which is an eternal reality. And in every way Allah will dress all of creation, all nations that are under their prophecies and prophets on Shafat al Qubra, on the day of Yawm al Mashar, the day of judgment, every nation will be raised with their Prophet and every Prophet will know their incompleteness and will run to the next Prophet of Allah and say, Intercede for us until all the Prophets run to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and begin to intercede. In every way Allah will dress every creation with the reality and the lights from Sayyidina Muhammad because they're from that light and that reality. Now did they get to know themselves they would have known the Lordship, that which is supreme within themselves that is commanding of their reality. And that Muhammadun Rasulullah is a lordly light, a divinely light from Allah's Divinely Presence and a light in which brings all of us back into that reality. So when they're teaching from this Muhammadan haqqaiq and Muhammadan reality and teaching how to run to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad it opens up then the understanding of the tariqahs. And the reason for the tariqahs that Allah had given as a gift to the nation is that the tariqahs should be led by Muhammadiyoon. So means the establishments of the turuq, the path, istiqamu fi tariqat when Allah was describing in the previous month is that hold firm to your tariqah, these are like umbilical cords to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And like these gifts that Allah want to bestow, that I want you to not know about me from the outside, I want you to come into the inner reality of my reality. And I'm hidden treasure and I'm hidden within the heart of my only believer because Allah is not concerned about all the lesser beliefs, Allah is concerned about the one whom belief is perfected belief. So we're talking about perfection not the minor the major. So Allah is then found in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad so inside of that Nurul Muhammadi because no more the physical and thinking is a physical body, this is the world of light. That in the reality of this immensity of this universe of light there's a, 
a plateau of light what we call Bahr al-Qudra that is just light. What insan sees of universes is only a reflection from the reality of the ocean of light. So as much as you travel, if Allah opened the sama and this creation is still in the sama, is still in the creation. You go see all the universes with like Hubble spacecraft, uh, billions and trillions of galaxies and universes within these uh, galaxies, within these universes, billions of universes, all of that is just a reflection of the ocean of power. Means it's not Allah's haqqaiqs, it's a manifestation in which Allah says, this dunya, that's hatta dunya is but an illusion. Of what you see from it, why Allah says it's but an illusion means it's not the real, it's the falsehood. Now in degrees of falsehood. Shaitan is false but dunya is false, it's existing in a falseness. And Allah says, Zahukan as a description that when the truth comes the falsehood will perish. So it means from the oceans of truth is reflecting to make all this ocean of creation. Allah allows this ocean of creation to exist. But it's not the truth, it's all false and that's why within it is every type of falsehood, every type of fitna, every type of badness. For if it was the truth it would not have those characteristics. That which is the truth is in complete submission and taslim to Allah So you see the earth then you make a little line above and say universes and galaxies. Imagine the vastness of it you can't even understand, that's still creation. And the ocean of power is above that reflecting to this creation. So it's not real, it's merely manifesting. For whatever time Allah wants that manifestation to manifest, when Allah says it's finished the falsehood begin to disintegrate. Everything will begin to disintegrate, everything will reach its mount and that become a reality of judgment day like our death. Our existence is an exact example of that reality that Allah said, why it's hard for you to understand, you're like that too. From the minute you're born your false image appeared. People call you something that's not really you. You develop and, and condition yourself into something that's not really you. And all that exists of you is not really you. All you see is a false image of you. If you believe in it too much it will lead you towards falsehood. That one becomes shariq with shaitan and goes into the oceans of eternal falsehood that I am something, I am this, I am that and that's shaitan's role. And Allah then describing, you have a truth within you, are you going to believe the falsehood and follow the falsehood or you're going to follow the truth within you? That's like the, 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 the dunya and the samah, that you have something from paradise within you and your physicality is false. And your physicality one day will have its judgment day the minute you die. Doesn't need the big judgment day, the minute you enter into that death state and you enter they want to throw you into the ground, for you that's a judgment day. They want to bury you but Allah said, they can only bury your falsehood not your truth. Your truth doesn't belong to this abode and then become the separation from your truth and your falsehood. Your soul has to separate from this physical dunya and this physical dunya all its desire was to put roots into the truth, the roots into the soul, try to hold it and command it. And Allah one understanding of Ayatul Kareem and they wish to extinguish the light. 
and they can never extinguish the light. Means that the nafs and shaitan they want to destroy the light of the soul and Allah said, they can do what they want. This body can do what it wants but it will never extinguish the light of the soul because the light of the soul is from Allah's oceans of truth and is guarded by Allah and nothing can destroy that light of Allah And Allah said, nothing supports it except Allah and nothing can benefit it except Allah So means that inner truth of, of light that Allah has given to us is from paradises and heavens and it must return back to Allah once ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Allah then gave the covenant to the tariqahs that bring out this reality and the reality of their light, teach them the reality of their light and the source of their origin. The source of their origin is a Muhammadan haqqaiq, is a Muhammadan light. That's why the praising upon Sayyidina Muhammad we described so many years of our life is the opening of that light. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَاتِ When this light is going to be given a victory, in a fatanaka fatan mubeen. What is a fatan mubeen? What is the clear victory of Allah That you got kebab, you got a job, you got a raise, this is Allah's victory. When Allah I don't care for this whole of creation like the wing of a mosquito because maybe wing of mosquito is it's much more difficult to build than us. So what is uh, the, the great opening, the clear opening of Allah It's when the servant understands their light is from the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah in a fatanaka fatan mubinan yaghfirukullahu ma taqaddam bi dhanbika ta'akhir means everything about those first four verses that we recite in our du'a our opening of every majlis of salli ala nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that reality that whom we granted a clear victory what is the clear victory it's the muhammadan light within you that you're now going to sit into the majlis of reality and as soon as you begin to make a salawat, begin to make a praising, begin to sit for this ishq and this love of Allah and this love of Allah is reciprocal that, Ya Rabbi I love you so much I want to think about the servant that you love the most. And so that we found in our life through this guidance that Allah love the most is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad the most complete love that loves all the other prophets, loves all the other nations. Why somebody would want to leave Islam when it encompasses everything to go to a lesser? Why would you want to be at the pinky when Islam is the hand? It encompasses all the prophets, encompasses all the kitabs, encompasses all the faiths and makes them all into one faith into the understanding of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah then this light, as soon as we sit in this majlis, that's the victory of Allah says, as soon as you started to make this path of love for Sayyidina Muhammad this light within you is now becoming victorious. The light of Prophet is in you being ignited. That's why the majlis of Mawli, the Nabi the birth, that's why we have all these fundraisers is that make intention for Mawli, the Nabi because you don't understand its reality. You look at these fundraisers for the Wahhabis, they want to build a masjid and $700,000 comes in in two days. We want to build a masjid, $2,000 comes in 90 days, it's ridiculous. That's how hard shaitan makes everything in Allah's way. But Hizbah shaitan they're, they can build a skyscraper masjid in the middle of New York because the funds come to them because Hizbah shaitan. He tells all his other shaitan, send, 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 send and it's gone. But in Allah's way everything comes difficult because shaitan is blocking everything. But the reality, the reality of the immensity of these lights 
the immensity of Mawlid the Nabi as soon as we make this then awliyaullah come into our lives and begin to teach. So Shaykh Sultan and awliya Imam Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Dagastani there's a whole article. He was inspired to make a Mawlid for Sayyidina Muhammad and he made a very grand and I think it has more to do with spiritual ramifications of what was presented, presented, presented. And Prophet was so happy with what Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Dagastani had done and granted him immense gifts, immense lights and immense realities of Mawlid the Nabi and the inheritance of our inheritance. Mawlid Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Dagastani said that anyone who conducts a majlis with the intention of Naqshbandi Mawlid for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad I will grant them from my station nine years of seclusion with me. Nine years, what does that mean? Do you think they are like talking hypothetical or do you think that Allah takes your arwah, your light? Because your light can be taken by awliya and done many things with it and you don't even know what's happening to you. As soon as you make that intention, Mawlana Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Dagastani takes a portion of your life from the world of Malakut, puts it within his reality and dresses it from that reality. Whatever he was bestowed upon in two seclusions for five years apiece, he's dressing your light, our lights with whatever he wants to dress it with. And all these dresses, all these blessings are coming on to these souls. But insan is jahul, is, is came to the earth and became ignorant. So the tariqs were to come and, and remind them, remind them of paradise, remind them of the gifts I've given to them, remind them of all of these realities and open their faith and open the eyes of their heart. Shaitan only promises them Las Vegas with sparkling lights and as soon as they enter they become punished. I promise them that which is eternal, I promise them lights and blessings that can't be imagined. I promise them oceans of forgiveness that can't be understood, that the angels couldn't understand. <coughs> no. Ya Rabbi why are you choosing them? Don't you see the bloodshed that they're going to make? Allah cast them down from heavens for even asking the question. Because they were astonished by what Allah is going to dress His creation from. The angels couldn't understand what Allah's tawab ur raheem, couldn't understand Allah's maqfirah and Allah sent them to earth for even asking that question. That what Allah want to bestow upon this creation and dress from its oceans, dress from its realities. So awliya come in our lives, these are the turuqs and the paths to the heart of Prophet So when your turuq has such immense awliya, imagine then what inheritances they're sending for their students. You have a father who has the wealth of all the dunya, in just one pocket their wealth of realities is not something that can be understood just for us to understand. Everything his teaching is immense wealths of reality. So just make an intention from only the Nabi and address you from nine years of seclusion with me, each mawlid. So when you're doing three mawlids a week and you're doing all your, your, your work based on mawlid, you're doing all your intention based on Milad al Nabi we ask that with intention of these videos Ya Rabbi for the sake of mawlid al Nabi that we give food for the sake of mawlid al Nabi to take from that hisab, not from our hisab, we're taking from the promise and the oath of these awliyaullah. If other shaykhs didn't believe it that's their problem. If they didn't understand it that's their problem but when we believe it Allah will grant based on your shaykh's belief and our belief is we're going to get those realities, we're going to get those rewards. We believe on it with all our heart, we made every intention based on that. So when they come into our lives they want to dress us from all of these blessings, all of these realities. What type of fires, what type of lights, what type of realities dressing upon the soul? 
That's why their growth and their spiritual reality are like rocket ships into the Divinely Presence. Prophet described just a small portion of one of these servants that if you make tafakkur for one hour it's as if your 70 years of worship next to the person next to you. You'll be rewarded with 70 years of worship for one hour of tafakkur. It's a hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad So there are servants who when they make their tafakkur Allah is dressing them in that hour 70 years of worship. So when they sit next to a person who's 70 years old their one hour was equivalent to his whole life of ibadah. So can you imagine then the ocean and the reality of tafakkur and the people of tafakkur? And if that one is from one hour of tafakkur what about the one who teaches that all their lives? And then Allah granting their 24 hours as if 70 years. So their daily hisab from Allah is what we calculated 1400 years for every one day they're alive, right? You go do your math, if the servant does… is one of those servants that Prophet is describing, you know he learned tafakkur, he teaches tafakkur and has ijazah from Prophet on tafakkur is one hour 70 years of worship. His 24 hours, his one day is 1400 years of worship in every day that that servant is alive. Or just cut my connection again on this side. We can hear you clearly Sayyidi. Shaitan, see that. So 1400. 1400 years in one day. Let's say, okay, Allah doesn't give him 24 hours but gives him 20 hours. And in one month, it's 43,000 years of worship. That's why Allah gives an example my day can be like a thousand years, or my day can be like 50,000 years. Wow. What Allah means by these numbers? So means these, these, these hisabs, these realities, you, you can't come and, 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 and try to show people these things and, and give them an understanding. The turuqs come with an immense reality. So this is a hadith, anyone wants all words the dali is a hadith of Prophet One hour like 70 years. So imagine the servant who is 20, 24 hours a day because their sleep is ibadah. The one whom teaching you how to connect, when they sleep their sleep is more powerful than their wakened state because their entire existence is in worshipness, they have a high speed connection, they're not dialing up. When they're teaching you how to tafakkur and contemplate, they're teaching you how to dial up your connection. Right? No, dial up, keep dialing and then you're at 92 baht, 72 baht like old time internet. But no there are, there are, there are people whom they don't dial up, they are continuously logged on and they're not even a cable, they're like a trunk, a T1 connection that their connection is, is, is fiercely moving through. These servants their 24 hours a day is considered worshipness, so one day Accompanying them on internet through practices, through everything is as if 1400 years you have to worship to be equivalent to that servant of Allah And what Allah is dressing that servant with. So then the tariqahs are a rahmah, when they're describing your bullseye, you want to get to Allah where are you going to find? Allah said, I'm not in heaven. I'm not on earth, I'm in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad in the heart of my believer. They say, I want to get to that reality. Then Allah gives, then Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, Ulul Amri minkum that these real Ulul Am they are amongst you, keep their company, be with them, eat with them, drink with them, pray with them, do your worshipness with them. 
And now we are live, alhamdulillah they open for people to be live with them, interact and communicate with them. Don't fight them, don't curse them because you can imagine why Allah says, don't do haram in Mecca, it's called haramain because every wrong you do in Mecca is multiplied by one million times. You make a good tawaf is one million, you pickpocket somebody's pocket your one million times your sin will be multiplied. There are walking Kaabas and Qiblas, so what you do bad is multiplied in millions and what you do good is multiplied in millions. That reality is a ni'mat from Allah that if you want this reality they're describing keep their company. Learn from them, read from them, educate yourself from them and most important make your connection with them. Learn how to make your tafakkur, learn how to make your connection, how to visualize yourself always with them. Dress me from your presence, I watch, I hear, I'm reading, I'm studying and when I close my eyes it should be the same. I should be seeing them, I should be with him, I should be feeling the tajalli. That he's not of a dunya person, he's of a spiritual person and I should be knowing his spirituality and not focusing on his physicality. When the Wahhabis want to do something nice they have a sirah, they allow like a sirah conference and the most they'll do is they'll sit and describe the life of Prophet and then begin to describe the shaykh and the form of Sayyidina Muhammad Most they'll try to do, that if you like twist their arms they come against every type of sirah conference. But even in the haqqaiq and the reality why do you want to focus on the physicality when you should be focusing on the light? The physicality is not the goal but the nur Muhammad is the goal. When someone says, I want to see, I want to see, I want to see Prophet this is your nafs, what are you going to do with seeing Prophet You should be asking to be in the light of Sayyidina Muhammad because we are not at the physical to the physical. We're not asking from mulk to mulk, from the physical world to visualize the other physical world and what the benefit of that. You're asking that from my ruhaniyat that I don't even know what my soul looks like but I want to be in the presence of your light. I want to be drawn into that light where you feel your soul entering into these oceans of light, into the oceans of oneness and singularity in which there are no form. The form is only the ocean of mulk. If you leave your form and enter into a world of light you can easily become one with that light. You can never become one with Allah but you can enter into the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah So then the shaykh exists for you to make that connection. When someone asking, I don't know, what, should I be here, should I be there, should I, I want to go with ten shaykhs, I want to listen to three shaykhs, I want this two shaykhs, are you telling me you're connecting with all of them and you're, you're making that connection with all of them and you're feeling the light with all of them? You have to find that light to have a, a love and admiration for that light, to learn from that light, to be connected with that light and ask that, dress me from your light in which I lose myself and your light overtake me. Because in the world of light you can't think like the world of form that, oh how these two form going to overtake, he's going to like possess me? No, in the world of light it's like you're a, a white light but they're green Muhammadan light and a very powerful green Muhammadan light and as soon as you come in proximity of their light like diffusing, your light begins to vanish in their light. On a sunny day take out a candle and look up at the sun, the candle light it vanishes in the rays of the sun that coming towards you. 
it diffuses it. So the more powerful light as you enter into their presence begins to overtake your light in which you can't see your light anymore, you just see their light overtaking your existence and your being. You want their light to be dressing, to be blessing, to overtake everything of the reality. When you can keep that and keep that and keep that, that is the muhabbat, that is the khudur and now you entered into their ocean of fana in which that shaykh's light is dressing your eyes, the shaykh's light is dressing your ears, the shaykh's light is dressing your speech means you hear like him. Your hearing is becoming more fine. You hear the waswas and the badness of your character, like somebody gave you a powerful walkie talkie. Amazing grace, I was once blind and now I see, I was once lost and now I'm found. This is the grace of Allah through the saints, through the awliya, that when you connect with them is that the light of their reality begin to dress your light and change the hue and the color of your existence. They color your light, the Baptists they want to wash you and give you a new light and they want to come one time in your life and wash you. Allah wash you five times a day, why you have to be Baptist? We are stronger than Baptists, we're baptizing five times a day. The Baptist came and sat with me, how about we wash you one time and, and wash you for God? He said, you only wash one time? That's like horrible. We wash five times a day cleaning ourselves for Allah Anything they say Allah has given more to Islam, these ridiculous understandings of people. So now you say, I want my light to have a, a more powerful light, then connect with them. Let their light to enter into you and begin to change the color and the hue of your light. And that's what we call then the attuning. And the zikr that you make once you're filled with their light, their light is their vibration, their light is their zikr, is everything. Go back to all the other teachings like beads for your tasbih. Their light is only manifesting because of the sound they make. When Allah make and dress them with their dhikr in their heart, not the dhikr on their tongue in these associations, but the dhikr in which their heart is vibrating at a Muhammadan beat in which to enter into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and to bring these realities for you. They're vibrating at a Muhammadan haqqaiq, otherwise a low vibration couldn't reach to that presence. The low sound and the high sound they don't match. Anybody stand, study a little bit about sound, right? Low frequency and this frequency there's no match. So Allah when He wants you to match the Muhammadan frequency He has to have raised you. He raised your light, He raised your frequency first. That's why they have to give you the tahleem the on, the, on your tongue. The shaykhs have to bestow upon you their zikr, they have to bestow upon you a light within your heart. That is their light that comes into you, that elevate your zikr in your qalb and in your soul in which your soul is vibrating at a, at a Muhammadan frequency. As a result of that, that frequency is up, when it's up high enough it can enter into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad's light. Anything lower will be destroyed by the Muhammadan frequency. That's why bad people, satanic people, bad nafs people, they don't have any understanding, they're here. They're a monkey at the bottom of a, of a chain, they're not ever going to reach towards that. When Allah give them a ni'mat, give a person a blessing, He raising their light, raises their frequency and that's why the study of the sound, first their sound increases, the frequency in which they're resonating as a result of the sound, you subbi huwa bihamdi, all of a sudden now their color of their frequency of their light is completely changing. And as a result that light is a Muhammadan frequency that's always in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Imagine the frequency of Sayyidina Muhammad now 
at a lower level the reality of Imam Mahdi How can anybody be with Sayyidina Mahdi if it's not Mahdiyun? Nabi Musa had the covenant of Allah the Ark of the Covenant, a stone that Allah had written the commandments and Nabi Musa broke it then the angels came and put it in a box and the angels would walk with this box. And anybody who entered into the presence of this box would die because of the frequency and the vibration of the energy from heavens upon these tablets and held by this box. And they were prescribed their rabbis to fast, to wash, to clean for many days before they entered into the holy precincts and the vicinity of a box. The box is is a is an example, but the real covenant of Allah is a Muhammadan heart. It is the Ark of the Covenant. The covenant and the contract is the Ahad of the heart, in which Allah made a covenant upon the heart. Under the Muhammadan government, that ark is their heart, and the angels are guarding their hearts. That's why two angels on top, two angels on the bottom. And every reality is bestowed into their heart. They are the walking covenant of Allah Ark of the Covenant. And the most author, authorized one is Imam Mahdi And what type of frequency is Sayyidina Mahdi vibrating at? The shaykhs are vibrating at that reality because Imam Mahdi is in the hidden quarters. And around Sayyidina Mahdi are 50 khalifas and 49 nawab. It was 49 before, 50 now it's 50 khalifas and 49 deputies around and their arwah and their reality is continuously in the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi And the only way they can be in that presence is Allah raise their frequency of their light so that His frequency wouldn't have killed them by going out. Their light has to be raised. Their sound and vibration of their soul has to be raised. As a result of that Allah put their souls in the precincts and in the association. The nucleus of their association is the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi and his arwah and his light is continuously emanating to him and to them. As a result of that emanation they're able to speak what they have to speak and his sword is the sword that guards them. But they are 24 hours a day in that association with Imam Mahdi So it means everything that being done is a preparation for sound. So as much as you hear these shaykhs, listen to the shaykhs, listen to the teachings, listen continuously, attend the majlis, the zikr, these sounds, these vibrations are now dressing, dressing, dressing the soul. And the dressing is being completed when you sleep and your nafs is out of the way. And that's why many people they're, they're having all sorts of hallucinations, dreams, experiences because the vibrations are very strong. It begin to shatter every type of falsehood within the person and make everything within them crack and shatter, crack and shatter. So everyone has to try to keep themselves together, keep their practices, keep what they're trying to do of the connection and then the tafakkur. Without the meditation the whole of tariqah doesn't exist. That's why it's not understood now how anyone could say that they have anything to do with tariqah and they don't teach muraqaba. And if they don't teach muraqaba they're not even referring people to the one whom is authorized to teach the muraqaba. They say, we can read a book on it for you and let's read a book on it. That's like saying, I don't know how to do surgery but I'll read about it and tell you. There's specific one that Allah has authorized for that reality. So when you connect and teach and learn from that then not only the sound is dressing you, not only all the realities and teachings are dressing you but the fires of the shaykh and the light will begin to dress. We said before they are like the satellites, they have to dress, have to dress, have to dress so that the Muhammadan light begins to come, the Mahdiyun light which is a red light.
It's a red glowing light from the reality of Sayyidina Mahdi that begins to enter into the soul. Prepare the soul for warfare, prepare the soul for extreme amount of struggle in the way of Allah against every shayateen and every type of badness and to be of benefit and love for humanity. Never in the harming of humanity but fierce against devils. Because the humans they're here to be saved and they're waiting for this Saviour of Allah to begin to appear upon earth. These majlises are already conducted, they've been conducted for the last 25 years. It's not something new, it's been conducted. Now the appearances are coming, the energies are coming, the physicality and the zuhur of Sayyidina Mahdi is coming very soon. Many people are having many, many dreams of many, many different events that are coming upon the earth. Those dreams are to prepare you that you should be meditating. If you see something coming well it's going to wash you away unless you're meditating, you're tafakkur, you're attending these majlises, you're attending the zikrs, you're trying your best to get all of these connections. We said that if they don't reach it with their physicality then their physicality will perish but the ruhaniyat will be giving its allegiance to Sayyidina Mahdi Once the body goes the soul is standing there to be of service for that reality. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding with the immensity of lights that are coming in Bab al-Maghfirah and that to dress us from the light of the 15th of Ramadan in which is the wiladat of Imam al-Hasan, dunya hasanat and all goodness and sifat al-Rahman to dress us and bless us with the birth of Imam al-Hasan as salam and we call that also the special day for Sayyidina Mahdi salam in which there's an association in Damask in Sham al-Sharif at Grand Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghestani's maqam that Allah give us a light and a love to and a life to reach to that night to be dressed by it and to be blessed by it and that we our hearts to be inspired towards goodness inshaAllah. So, Allah Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifoon, Salaamun Al Musaleem, Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Bi Hurmati Muhammad Al Mustafa wa Bi Siri Surat Al Fatiha.